One of the problems with GitOps and pushing your infrastructure as code manifests to Git is handling secrets. Sure, you can use external secret stores like AWS Secret Manager, HashiCorp Vault or Doppler just to name a few. That however may be too complicated for what you're trying to do. Well, in this video we'll explore an alternative solution, one that doesn't rely on any third party service. Hey everyone, Mircea here. In this video, we're going to take a look at a couple of tools that can help us encrypt secrets and store them safely in Git. We'll be taking a look at Agge, a tool that can encrypt files for us, and SOPS, an editor of encrypted files. Even more, at the end of the presentation, I'll show you some tips and tricks on how I manage my secrets in my own GitOps repository using some bash scripts and naming conventions, so make sure to stick around to the end. This video comes as uh, somewhat of a continuation to one of my previous videos in which I talked about Tiles Linux. You can find that video here. One of the main selling points I kept rambling on about in that video is that we can store the entire OS config in a YAML file which we can then push to Git. You may have noticed however that by the end of that video I didn't actually push those files to Git. Furthermore, doing so would have been a bad idea. You see. Those files contain sensitive information such as keys and certificates, which would be unsafe to push to a public repository. It would be a bad idea to push them to a private repository too, but that's another discussion for another day. So what gives then? Did I lie about pushing those files to Git? Well, not really, you see, we just have a couple of more things to do before we can safely do that. So. This is what we're going to do today. We're going to pick up where we left off in that video and get those files ready for the git push command. First off, we're going to install Agie and generate our encryption key pair. Then we are going to encrypt our Talos secrets file using the public key and decrypt it using the private key. Next, we are going to install SOPS and see where it steps in to make our lives a bit easier and how it works together with Agie. We are again going to use SOPS to encrypt and decrypt the file and see what the differences are. Finally, I'll show you how I manage my secrets in my own GitOps repository to make my life a bit easier and to make sure that my secrets are always safe. With all of that out of the way, let's get straight to it. The first item in our to-do list is to install Agi onto our system. But what is Agi though? Well, in short, Agi is a simple, modern and secure file encryption tool format and Go library. It can encrypt or decrypt a file to and from a binary format. The first step is to head over to the Agge GitHub release page. First, we have to go to their GitHub repository and browse to the releases section. We'll just grab the latest release, which at the time of making the video is version 1.1.1. On the releases page, you'll find a list of available versions. Choose the version that corresponds to your system's architecture and OS. Agia provides pre-compiled binaries for various platforms, including Linux, so I'll just grab the Linux AMD64 version. Once you've identified the correct binary for your system, grab the link and go over to your terminal. You can use a tool like wget or curl from the command line to download the file. After downloading the file, we'll need to extract the binary from the archive. We can do this using the tar command. Once extracted, we'll find both the Agge and the Agge keygen binaries among the extracted files. You can think of these two as being similar to SSH and SSH keygen, if that's something you're more familiar with. To make them accessible from anywhere onto our system, we need to move them to a directory that's included in our system's path environment variable. Also, don't forget to make them executable. Finally, let's verify that we have successfully set everything up. We should be able to run agia dash dash version and see the version number printed to the terminal. And the same thing really for agia dash keygen dash dash version. Now that we have installed agia and agia keygen, let's just go ahead and encrypt the file. First, we need to generate a key pair using agia keygen. This will generate a pair of cryptographic keys, a public key and a secret key. Keep your secret key secure as it's required to decrypt the files encrypted using your public key. What I typically like to do is to use the dash o flag to put the private key directly into a file. 
You can see that by running this command, only the public key gets printed to our terminal. If we take a look at the generated file, we can see that in there we have a comment telling us the time at which the key was created, a comment with the public key, and finally we have the actual private key itself. With the keys generated, let's just encrypt the Talos secrets YAML file we generated in the previous video. We need to run the aget encrypt command and then specify our public key which we generated earlier as the recipient. Then we redirect the output to a file called secrets.agia for example. And finally, we point Agia to the file we want to encrypt, which in this case is secrets.yaml. If you attempt to view the contents of the secrets.agia file, you'll notice that it's in binary format and it's not human readable. This encrypted file is now secure and can only be decrypted with the corresponding secret key. The secret key we saved in a file moments ago. But you know what they say, trust but verify. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's decrypt the file we encrypted earlier and retrieve the original content to make sure that everything is okay. Here we are running the agia-decrypt command. We are pointing it to the location of our private key which will be used to decrypt the file which agia calls identity. Then we specify the name of the file we want to decrypt. Again we can redirect the output to a decrypted file called secretsdecrypted.yaml. Now that the file has been decrypted, we can view its contents using any text editor or command line tool. To compare the file we are going to use diff and you'll see here that the files are perfectly identical. So, now that we can encrypt and decrypt files, should we just push secrets.agia to git? Well, sure, we can and it will functionally be okay. However, the user experience of that will be subpar. Managing binary files is kind of a pain and the git diff will be an unreadable mess and so on and so forth. It works, but we can do better. So here is where SOP steps in. What is SOPS then? Well, to keep it short and sweet, it's essentially a helper tool for managing sensitive data in files. SOPS by itself is not an encryption tool. It cannot encrypt files by itself. It relies on a third party tool to do the actual encryption, whereas it itself is just a helper tool. For our particular use case of handling YAML files for Talos and Kubernetes manifests, what we really care about here is that it essentially allows us to encrypt only specific values in our key value files. Essentially, all YAML is just a bunch of key value pairs put in a file and SOPS allows us to leave the keys intact and encrypt only the values based on the keys matching a given regex. This way, the files are still somewhat readable while exposing no secret information. SOPS can make use of various encryption backends including AWS or GCP KMS, Azure Key Vault, PGP and, you guessed it, AGE. Obviously, we're going to go with AGE here. Let's install SOPS onto our machine. Again, we need to go to their GitHub repository and navigate to the releases section. From here, we select the latest one. At the time of making this video, that's version 3.8.1. On the releases page, you'll find an example script to download and install the precompiled binary. As you can see, the script downloads the precompiled binary, adds it to a directory in our path environment variable, and then makes sure it's executable. The main difference here is that we are now downloading the binary file directly instead of an archive so we don't need to extract it. Make sure to modify the curl command or rather the URL to appropriately include the right OS and architecture for your system. Finally, let's verify that we have successfully installed SOPS by running SOPS-version and here we can see the version number printed to the terminal. Now that we have installed SOPS, let's start using it. To avoid having to pass in a lot of CLI arguments and make it easier to understand, let's create a config file for SOPS. Essentially, we are going to define some parameters which we would otherwise have to pass in to each and every command we're running. So let's dissect this a bit. Essentially, we have a list of creation rules. These rules tell SOPS how to handle our files based on a regex name with their path. This rule in particular tells SOPS to encrypt any file matching the given path regex using the specified agi public key and to only encrypt the values associated to the keys matching the given encrypted regex. Now, returning to English, this effectively means that SOPS will handle our secrets.yaml file wherever it is located in the repo and encrypt all the keys, tokens and certificates in it. Now that we have our config file, we can run SOPS commands and it will automatically deduce the CLI arguments necessary based on the rules in that config file. 
we can now encrypt our Talos secrets.yaml file with sop dash dash encrypt by pointing it to the file we want to encrypt. This command will just dump the encrypted content to our standard output, so we can use the dash dash output flag to dump it in a new file. However, I find that to be a bit clumsy having to specify the output file before the input file and I don't really like it, so I'll usually just redirect the output to a file instead. Alternatively, you can pass in the dash "-i", or dash dash "-in place flag", to overwrite the initial file. We can now take a look at our encrypted file, and one thing we will notice is that straight away it is much more readable than the plain Agi encrypted version. All of the keys are still left intact, while the values themselves are now safe and encrypted. Even more, we can see that it added a SOPS section to our file, which contains some extra information needed to decrypt the file later on, such as the last time the file was updated, the version of SOPS used to encrypt it, and the public Agi key file used. Now onto decryption. The command is just as simple as the one we used to encrypt the file, all thanks to our SOPS config file. To decrypt our file, we just need to pass it in to the SOPS dash decrypt command. But how does it know to use our private AGE key file, and more specifically, how does it know where to find it? Well, there are a couple of options. First, we can set the SOPS AGE key file in variant variable to the path of our secret AGE key file, and SOPS will know how to use it. We can now decrypt the file running sops dash dash decrypt and pointing it to our encrypted file and redirecting the output to a new file. Don't forget to unset the environment variable we set earlier so it won't impact our next option. The second option is to put the private agi key file in the .config directory in our home directory under sops agi keys.txt. Now, sops will by default be looking for keys in there. The first thing we need to do is to create a directory structure since it most likely doesn't exist yet. And then we can just go over and move the key file to that path. Again, we can now decrypt the file using the same command we used earlier. Now that we have decrypted the file, we can compare it to the original using diff. And surprise surprise, they are perfectly identical. And with that, we can now push our SOPS encrypted file to git safely and we will be able to decrypt it with our private AGI key file. Now, I promised to show you some tips and tricks on how I manage my secrets in my own GitOps repository. And the first part of the equation is keeping your secrets safe. One problem I ran into when encrypting and decrypting secrets in place is that I would often accidentally push a plain secret to git. So, it all starts with the naming convention. In general, all of my Kubernetes manifests are named in the resource name.resource type.yaml format. For example, a config map called foo will be stored in a file called foo.configmap.yaml. This means that I know ahead of time all of my secrets will be in files called something.secret.yaml. Thus, any file in ending in .secret.yaml is included in my gitignore. This makes sure that no plain secret ever makes it to git, and I do the same thing for any other kind of secret file. Next, I know that all of my encrypted secrets are ending in .secret.sops.yaml. This means that I know every file called something.secret.sops.yaml is the SOPS encrypted version of something.secret.yaml. What this allows me to do is that I can now batch process all of my encrypted files. In my GitOps repository, in the scripts directory, I have two scripts that automate my bulk encryption and decryption. We have the sops encrypt all.sh and sops decrypt all.sh. Let's first take a look at the encryption script. What you'll see here is that it will look for all the path regex entries in my sops.yaml file, and then it will look for all of the files inside my repository that match any of those regexes. These would be all of my plain secret files that need to be encrypted. Then it will build out the name for the encrypted file by changing the .yaml at the end to a .sops.yaml. If an encrypted file with the same name doesn't already exist, it will simply just create it. However, if a file called something.sops.yaml already exists, then it will actually decrypt it in memory and compare it to the original yaml file. If the contents of the two files match, then it won't actually re-encrypt the file, but if they are different, then it will overwrite it. 
The reason for implementing this check is that SOPS itself is not idempotent. This means that running SOPS encrypt twice on the same file will result in two very different outputs. The two encrypted files will indeed decrypt back to the same thing, but they themselves would be different. This would cause a lot of unnecessary changes in Git and force me to push redundant information or just sanitize the output by hand. Similarly, the decryption script looks for all of the files in my repository ending in .sops.yaml. For each file it finds, it will build out the name for the plain file, so it will replace .sops.yaml with a simple .yaml at the end. Then, it will check if a decrypted file with the same name already exists. If it does, it will decrypt the current one in memory and compare the two. If they are the same, it will simply skip over the file, but if they are different, it will alert me. Now, it won't override the plain secret file by default unless I pass in the dash "-f", or the dash dash "-force flag". The reason for prioritizing the plain file over the encrypted one is that, logically speaking, there is no reason for the two files to be different and for the encrypted one to be the most up-to-date version. If I am to change the encrypted file, I first need to change the plain one and then re-encrypt it. These two scripts, alongside with the naming conventions I mentioned earlier and my git ignore file, essentially reduce my secret handling workload to only two commands. I need to run the sops encrypt all script to update all of my secrets, and then I need to run the sops decrypt all script to just decrypt all of them. Furthermore, to make things even simpler and to allow me to run those scripts regardless of my current working directory in relation to my repository, I make use of another utility called taskfile. Now, I won't go into what taskfile is and what it does in this video as it's outside the scope, but you can check out this video Victor from DevOps Toolkit made about it. It's essentially a makefile alternative. The way that task comes into all of this is that it will look for a taskfile.yaml at the root of my GitHub repository, and then it will execute the tasks listed there. In my task file config, I then have a task to run each of those scripts, so I can simply call task sops encrypt and task sops decrypt from anywhere in my repository, and all of my secret files will be processed. And that's about it for this one. We can now finally push all of our secrets to Git without worrying about being compromised. We covered a lot in this video, we started from the very bottom by seeing how Agia works by itself, then we went one layer of abstraction higher by checking out SOPS, and finally we even created our own abstraction layer on top of SOPS with some bash scripts to automate our secret management end to end. If you learned something new from this video and found it helpful, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. On your way down there, make sure to hit the subscribe button as well if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys. If you like this video, you'll also want to check out the prequel to this one, in which I talk about Talos Linux, an OS built specifically for Kubernetes. You can find that linked here. This video serves as somewhat of a continuation to that, since I promised in that video we can push our secret file to Git, and here I just show you how.